really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard, which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Welcome. I'm still in this month of March on the lane of women and women who've done great things, taking ordinary businesses or having a passion for something that they live and they believe in. One such person is somebody who some, let me see, more than 10 years ago now, about 10 years ago precisely, in 2006, she became a Guinness World Record holder in dancing. Now, this person, as far as I know, was the first person that made dancing glitz and glamorous, and she's done a lot more with it since then. However, why did we decide to talk about dance today? Dance because in recent times, on the path to choosing fame or to finding fame, many young people just a few months ago queued up in their numbers trying to be the one that won the prize for Dance with Peter. And I told myself, who was the first person that made dance what it is? It was a woman, as far as I know, like I said. And that woman is my guest today on Seriously Speaking. Don't go away. Kafayat Shafao Ame, popularly known as Kafi, is a Nigerian dancer, fitness coach, and dance instructor. Her dance career took off many years ago, right after she was spotted during her weekend dance rehearsals and workouts at the National Stadium. In 2006, Kafi broke the Guinness Book of Records for longest dance party, alongside her group, dancing for 55 hours and 40 minutes. Today, Kafi is married to Joseph Ame and have two children. Her love and passion for what she does has seen her develop over the years innovation-based methods for teaching dance and dance fitness. She joins Adesua on Seriously Speaking to speak on this and more. Welcome back. My guest is actually Kafayat Shafao Ame. When she won the Guinness World Dance Record for the longest dance party in 2006, she was just Kafayat Shafao. But today, she's one of the top dancers in Africa and in the world. But beyond that, she's also an instructor, a mother of two. And she remains looking like, come on, you are, too, you are making me jealous. I guess it's Kafi. Kafi is not Oh, yeah. Hey, mommy, how far? Hey, how you doing, ma? Okay, oh yeah, go on, go on. Ah, what, what should I do? Okay. Oh, go on, go on. I should start dancing. Yes. Oh, yes. Right go now. on. Which one do you want? Eh, you should go this way. Eh, or you should go Al-Qaeda. Oh, do you know Al-Qaeda? Oh, you know what? Sit down. Uh, okay, I should Stop. sit down. Because I, I want you, at the end of the show, to show me the latest thing that you have created. Okay, then You many must moves. have a new dance move. <laughs> many, yes. But do you create dance moves every year, or how does it work with dancing? Well, it's... Half and half, it's either there's a trend and there's a particular move that is trending or um, in terms of choreography, I have to come up with choreography like mm -hmm. almost every day, every week. It's like, Do you sleep, dance, think, dream, talk? Yeah. Okay. What, what, what I would like to do, but you, you heard my intro when I said in recent times, even dancing, people are queuing up to seek fame from dancing. What did you feel like doing that? Seeing that, rather? Seeing that, uh, for me, it's like... Like, there was a time on the show, Dance with Peter, where I kind of like shed tears because I saw what I had seen 12 years ago that nobody saw. And I see young people doing movements that I can't even, or I couldn't even do when I started. And this young girl of 17 that just started is already achieving movement like that. And I'm like, you're the reason why I feel like all my sacrifices are paying off. And when I see... The industry blossomed to the point whereby productions like, you know, you, you're hearing Kakadu, you're hearing um, uh, Love Is, mm -hmm. you're hearing Love Like a Movie. Dance is something. Hearing, it, it's becoming such a, a beautiful... A revolution. A revolution now. It's revolutionized. It has turned out to be something that parents are confident to say, I want my daughter to be a dancer or I want my son to mm -hmm. go into the dance uh, industry. And, and I don't mind anymore mm -hmm. because... So for me, it's... Well, you've had a pretty thing. colorful life, right? Very. I mean, life that a lot of people don't know. I mean, one of them is, Kafayat used to be one big, fat, 
16, size 6. <laughs> you don't even say fat. Like, no, you were not even fat. Size 16 is not fat. Yeah, but to think that you ever wear size bones, 16. Like you say. Yeah? Thick bones. Thick oh, bones. Okay, you know, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show the picture at some point. Yeah. What I need to know is, I say your life is colorful because both your parents were both married before. They got married, had four of you, then all of you. How many were you between both of them? Uh, 13. 13. So growing up in a home like that. What I find interesting is the fact that though they live both in London, Canada, all of those places, whenever mommy was pregnant, what did she do? She comes to Nigeria to give birth. My brother practically was coming out of her on the staircase of the, of the aircraft. Because, mm -hmm. you know, she's always going to lie about her due date. So, <laughs> but she's always close to delivering. Did she ever tell you why? She's late now. Yes, she's late. But she just believed that I need to bring them home. I don't want them to be born in a, in a foreign land. As against the foreign land, as against the idea now where people actually even save up to go give birth in... Okay, there it is. a found the image. Yeah. I had to search for this image. Take a look at that. Hi, where hi. were you? Were you on Bar Beach? Wow. That's you in the call. blue tank top with the yeah, with red the shorts. Yeah. And you had lost weight at this point in time. Yes. I, was, I, was, I, I think I was a 14 here, yeah. not 16. We were only 16 years. And you were yeah. in university? Had you graduated at this time? Yes, uh, I had not graduated university, but I was, yeah. Ogun State University was yes. where you went to. Yes. Okay, now, mommy was like that. Were you like that? Let's talk about how you, I will leave that on for now. <laughs> but mommy was like that. Your two kids, were they born in Nigeria? Yes. People expected because I'm Kathy, I should give it to them in America, which, yeah, the options came up. But something just didn't make it work. And I was not really pushing for it. I was not really like killing myself because there was this statement people kept making that, ah, born them for America, oh, you know, it ebbs there, they become citizens. I said, citizens for what reason? So are you telling me that a Nigerian citizen cannot be successful? Is that what you're telling me? That a child born in Nigeria, you have created a black X box saying there's going to be problem to be successful just because you are born here? Are you telling me that being in America, should she or he, or he or she are not going to pose, go through racism, they're not going to go through all those kind of like brick walls that they will also go through here. And they look at you as, as a You're person. You're successful, aren't you? I use myself as an example. I always do that. I said, look, my daughter and my son can be in Nigeria and the White House will ask for him or her to be there. And they, the country will recognize them. It's achievable. So I'm not going to use that as a benchmark to what it is that is the grooming of the success of my children. So I think that played in, a, in the mind of my, my mother that... What is there giving birth to them? Mm -hmm. Let me come home where I but am But she would always take you back. Just immediately, like the week after, we're back in London again. You know, I did kindergarten in, 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 in London. I could remember very well playing in the snow. Mm. But know, things didn't work out too well for both of them. No. And that's what made you mommy early in life, at 16. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yes. Um, not at 16, actually. At 11. Oh, at 11? Yes, yeah, at 16, I left my mom because mm -hmm. of the environment was not favorable. you taking care of your sisters and brother. And brother. And in, with your mom? Yes. Because mom wasn't... Mom. Yes, with my mom. So I grew up really fast. Why were you taking care of them? I, I was just that system that was there, available to take care of them where mommy was away or what mommy was incapable of. Or basically, maybe because as I look at it now, that I'm more older, see the pressure that a woman can actually go through when she's lost her family system. God blessed me with the wisdom to be able to just manage. I don't know how it, God did it. I always tell people, I am one of the most blessed people in this world because I went through the pain that if people start to visit what it is that makes you experienced in life, the kind of experiences I've gone through. Some people will say, I, I didn't get up to that until I was 60. I didn't get those experiences until I was 50. So having to I take care those, of your siblings. I, I had to... I had, a wealth of experience in life that life dealt me at a very early age, which actually contributed to the training of who I am today. So I'm really glad. You're yeah, glad for that. But eventually you ended up with Mama Suru. I mean, Mommy Suru, Larry, because it didn't work with Mommy. You ran away from home. Yeah. You found the relatives, because you're back in Nigeria at this time. You found the relatives from your mother's side or your father's yes. side? I found, a, I found a friend who went to school with my uncle's son. And uh, let me, it's not even my friend directly. It was the woman I ran to. Her sister came to, like, for a holiday. And it was like, that name sounds familiar. And I was like, I think I know Shafiel. your family house. Well, Shafa, just... Shafa, Shafa, yeah. And she's like, do you know, I know your family house, but we always go to visit your granddad. But I'll take you to your granddad first. So she took me there. I saw granddad. I was like, wow. So granddad 
He's a nice looking young man. You know, a little old man looking nice. He was very fair. And he was like, you know, I'm old. I can't take care of you, but I know your uncle's house. So they gave me the address to my uncle's house on that Easter Sunday, I, th I guess. And that's how I, I went to Mommy Sulie. It was in 1998. 1998. Mommy Sulie, very dramatic. Ha! Talele yi, kafa yani, yi omo, yi da gwa. I have had you when you are two weeks old. Two weeks. <laughs> so I had that kind of mommy, you know, and she like took us she in took and in. my uncle, they started raising us. And sent you back to school. Sent us back to school. We started going back to school. I went back for my sister. My sister getting out of my getting my sister was like Rambo movie. No, but was that <laughs> fair to all of you to just leave your mom and then? I, I, get, I made a statement to her when things were going really south and when she did something because I get to talk to my mom, frankly, sometimes, even though it earns me spanking, but I get to bear my mind to what the truth is of our situation. And one of these one of those days, I told her straight to her face. I said, "Mommy." Look, if we don't fix our lives now, how would the rest of your life be if I am not empowered the way I should? I need to be empowered so that you can, you can go old happy. Did you ever dance as a child? Yes, I did. Oh, really? Yeah, then I stopped dancing after a while because I didn't understand why people kept staring at me and going to sit down when I'm dancing. I thought it meant <laughs> I was bad. But I didn't know it was because, money. yeah, I, thought, I didn't know. I, people just go and sit down and be like, ah, okay. Anyway, I must go. Thank you for watching the show, but we'll leave you with the kill mosquito well well Kill mosquito. So if they can just take up the, what's the Iyanya's kurukere? We'll do Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready. Are you ready? Yes. Let's go.